time for a deep dive, spoiler-filled discussion on The Haunted House Project. Uh, my first impression, having watched this, is that it reminded me a whole lot of Grave Encounters. Just the nature of uh, you know, a production company coming across the found footage, um, you know, remastering it and re-releasing it and having some of the intro, uh, you know, be, be there. Uh, the, I mean, obviously it, it deviated quite a bit and, uh, they came out fairly close together. Uh, this, uh, Haunted House Project was 2010, Grave Encounters was 2011. Um, so I don't think any, you know, either of them really stole from each other. Not that they were entirely brand new concepts to begin with. Um. But I did want to uh, touch on a few key scenes in the Haunted House Project that I did love. Uh, the one that I really touched on uh, in, the, in the spoiler-free review was the uh, character being pulled through the doorway into the blackness. The way that that was done, I was thrilled with. Uh, I loved that moment. Uh, just the silent, you know, huh right into there, uh, you know, like going up to the top two-thirds of the doorway and nothing. Uh, I love that. That was cool. Uh, other than that, um, there wasn't a whole lot in there that I found to be terribly unique, terribly original, uh, but that doesn't mean it wasn't effective. The uh, last, the very, very, very last scare before the end credits started to roll uh, oh, that was just, uh, that was cheeky. Uh, I, I have, uh, <laughs> I could so easily see that as cheap and, uh, a, a, a cheat, but I loved it anyway. I, I you know, I, uh, I'm going to forgive that one and, uh, just enjoy it for what it is. It reminded me of the last scene in the Thai movie, uh, coming soon. Uh, which I do want to review here. I love that movie. Uh, but uh, regardless, The Haunted House Project, uh, yeah, I mean, there really isn't just a, there really isn't a whole lot to say about it. Like I said, there was a lot of, you know, take three steps to the left and be scared. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, plot elements to it that I could really break down and discuss further that... Uh, there wasn't a lot of character development that I could uh, talk about and discuss further. There wasn't a lot of, um, you know, backstory or definition of the evil or uh, anything like that. So I guess the one thing that I did want to discuss is a concept um, that Grave Encounters uh, shared. Uh, without spoiling too much of that movie, if you haven't seen it, it is worth watching. Uh, this is a fairly common trope in horror films is the nature of, uh, you know, you go into a haunted place and the presupposition is that you have a finite amount of time that you are safe and can exit. And once that time passes, once night falls, once you've gone too far, once you, you know, tick off the evil entity to the nth degree, now the rules are changed, now you can't get out, and we're going to alter the physical world to make sure that that happens. Um, and this didn't do that, uh, you know, the Haunted House Project didn't do that a whole lot, but it did touch on it with them running for the exits, and it seemed like a lot of time passed, they were weary on their feet. You don't get that way after two minutes of running. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the exits that they went through weren't there. They were constantly t retracing their steps. You know, we've been here before. I mean, it's three buildings. It's not that huge. So it does seem like the nature of, uh, of, of time and space were being manipulated around them to prevent them from leaving, that their time has now come up. The uh, window of safety that they could have left, uh, however small or large that was, uh, is gone, and uh, that's a tricky thing. That is something that I love seeing in movies. I really, really do, but I do want to discuss it because it's a huge moment. It's a huge decision when those laws get manipulated. 
Uh, from a writing standpoint, it seems easy. Um, we're not going to let them out because the evil is not going to let them out. And from a messing with your mind level, it works very well. And from a visual effects level, it can be a lot of fun to play with. Um, you know, the, uh, you know, having the camera pan from one shot back to the next and, you know, where there was a window is now just a brick wall and, you know, what's going on. Uh, it can be a fun thing for the actors and the characters to explore. You know, this battery I know lasts 16 hours and it's almost dead, which means that it should have been daylight eight hours ago and some, you know, the sun isn't coming through the window, but, you know, even through the bars. Um, it can be a fun thing to explore, but for the watcher of the movie, whether they realize it or not, it's a massive, massive shift in the tone of the film. It's something that you have to be aware of before you decide to pull that trigger. Because whatever element you had of your characters getting out of the situation in one piece is gone. It could still be written in if you wanted to, but for the most part, it is gone. And it has now shifted from a movie in which the characters are fighting and trying to figure out a way through cleverness, through grit, determination, physical torture, whatever, to stay alive, to a cat and mouse game. Whatever evil is in charge is now fully in charge, and they are toying with their prey. And, you know, if, if something in there is able to manipulate the world to that level, uh, and they're doing it in such a way as to uh, toy with the characters, how can you stop that? How could you fight that? How could you overcome that? Um, you know, like I said, it's not something that you can't write your way out of, that the characters can't overcome, but it does eliminate 99% of whatever hope that the audience members have for that character. So, um, like I said, it's just something to kind of be aware of when you're watching a movie and it pulls that uh, out of its hat, kind of think about where your attitude might change in terms of how you're watching the movie. And uh, I think you'll be surprised how much of a shift it has. That's not to say I don't like it happening. I'm just saying that it's something to be conscious of and be used sparingly for people that are going to be writing and making horror films. Uh, or even, uh, you know, horror, you know, writing horror novels. It was something that uh, was fairly prevalent in uh, uh, Stephen King. He uh, wrote it as Richard Bachman, The Regulators. Uh, that had that element to it with one of the characters looking up at the night sky. And instead of seeing stars, he saw cartoonish, you know, five-year-old picture, uh, you know, uh, of, of stars in the sky. You know, at what point, I think the character even addressed that, how do you fight something that changes the stars in the skies? Uh, but, you know, he, he found a way to do it. And, uh, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting point to discuss. So, if you want to explore that uh, with me further, uh, if you have different opinions on the, the Haunted House Project, if you have stuff uh, that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about, uh, feel free, leave it in the comments, and uh, I will be reading them and going through them uh, until tomorrow, and there will be a new review, and that should about do it for this time.